we can kind of get started here. Uh, I know the governor's got a tight schedule. He's not going to miss any, that's for sure. First off, I just want to thank everybody for coming out at 3 o'clock on a Monday. Uh, when we got this time that we found out, you know, at 3 o'clock on a Monday, people were busy. You know, they have lives and there's a lot of good, a lot of good things going on. And the biggest excuse I heard was their children, and that's no excuse. So they had to go get their kids from school. So, But we do want to welcome the governor. We are always happy to have him here, even if he's not bringing a check. Uh, it's good to see him. Uh, at this time, I want to introduce some uh, local elected officials that we have here, and I'm going to start off with our former judge, uh, David Jones. <laughs> our, circuit, our county clerk, Bess Ralph. <laughs> our sheriff, David Thompson. <laughs> our judge executive candidate, Brandon Thomas. <laughs> the magistrate candidate, Joe Barnes. Uh, we've got the Hartford Mayor Hendricks is here. We've got a candidate for Hartford Mayor, a man in red, Deanie Minton. <laughs> uh, council person, or council candidate, Hartford Pam Slayton. Thank you for coming. <laughs> All the way from Fordsville, Mayor Hardesty made the trip. <laughs> and then our, uh, our newly uh, appointed circuit clerk, Shannon Kirtley. Well, thank you. Again, I want to thank you all for coming out, and, and this will probably be the last time I get to do this, so I was thankful to have this opportunity to introduce a good friend of mine, and, and a fellow that has been a friend to Ohio County. Uh, Jerry Rhodes come to Ohio County, first time I ever met him, I was impressed. Uh, he truly has a servant's heart. Uh, he wants to do what's right for everybody. Uh, he really didn't pay to play the party card. He wanted to do what was right in every instance, so uh, that, that impressed me the most about him. Uh, Jerry could have easily stuck to the bigger cities in, in Hopkinsville, Madisonville, uh, but he didn't. I mean, he'd come to Beaver Dam and Hartford and McGann and Fordsville, and he worked tirelessly uh, for everybody in Ohio County. So it is a great honor of mine, uh, first off, to get to know him and to call him a friend, but to introduce our Senator Jerry Rhodes. Thank you, Jason. Uh, he did that just about the way I wrote it out. <laughs> uh, that's, thank you, Jason. That's uh, those. You know, uh, before I say anything else, I want to. I want to. This is just I'm not gonna make this a farewell deal, but because uh, I'm just down the road, and I'm gonna be back here a lot, and uh, I'm gonna be in office till December 31st by midnight, and I'm gonna run on right on up to the finish line. But I want to thank everybody in here for their friendship and support over the years. Um, it's been, it's been a real honor and a pleasure to represent Ohio County and I've always, from day one, I've always been impressed uh, how well Ohio County folks work together in a bipartisan way, uh, crossing party lines, and over here you better because your husband and your wife are different parties and your sons and your daughters are different parties, so uh, it, it's just a matter of all getting along, but, but, but Ohio County pulls for Ohio County, they do things for themselves and they take care of each other. Uh, with veterans and, and many other ways, so it's a real honor to be here, uh, and it's a it's a it's a huge honor for have, for the governor to come down here. We have 120 counties in this state, and he could be anywhere right now, uh, and he has a very busy schedule. But I think it, it speaks volumes that the governor has taken some time out of his busy schedule. I don't have the pleasure of introducing him today. We're going to do a little tag team thing here, like we have before. Uh, I want to recognize a good friend of mine who came over from Hopkins County, uh, who's retired UMW minor, and uh, he's got his uh, Allison Graham shirt on. Don't stand up and kind of show off your shirt here. Okay. Uh, I, I call Joe my walking yard sign. He's always got a T-shirt on, but uh, at this time, it, it really gives me great pleasure to uh, start this. Uh, transfer here by introducing my good friend and colleague Tommy Thompson and uh, one of the greatest pleasures I've had in serving Ohio County and the 6th District has been to have a working colleague like Tommy and I've said many many times uh, as mo most recently in, in uh, Fordsville Willow when we were in, over there the other day and over Beaver Dam 
Uh, he really makes me look good in Ohio County, but you can't you can't put a value on a working partner who supports you and who does so much for Ohio County. And it's not that way everywhere. Uh, you don't always have legislators who work as closely together as Tommy and I have. And, and I'm confident that that will continue with the election of Will Cox. And I had mixed feelings when I decided not to run again, but that I kind of worked that out a little bit when I found out who was running to succeed me. I felt a whole lot better about my decision because I felt like the 6th District and Ohio County were going to be in real good hands with Will Cox. And I'm not going to steal the governor's thunder who's going to introduce him, but I just wanted to uh, let you know that I publicly endorsed him. I feel very strongly about his candidacy, and he will do an outstanding job for Ohio County. But this time, I want to introduce my working partner who has done an outstanding job and who is my personal friend who has uh, served Ohio County well. And we don't want to take his candidacy for granted. He's on the ballot. Let's, uh, let's work just as hard for him as we do for Will and our other candidates. Tommy, step forward here at this time. I want to introduce Tommy Thompson. Jerry, thank you. Before I start, I think the first time I met you, Jason, was uh, we were at Denny's out by the parkway, and I had just gotten my legislative paycheck, but it wasn't enough to buy dinner, so I borrowed from you. <laughs> but I appreciate that. Uh, thank you all. What a great turnout. As Jason said at the outset, it's very difficult in the middle of the day to, to get folks to come out from work and so forth. So thank you all for coming out for this great occasion. It's not often uh, that we have such a privilege of having this great lineup here that we do, but most importantly, you all make the difference for us, and so we're so glad that you're here. I just want to say that uh, before I introduce the governor that I want to thank you all for the privilege that you've given me for now six terms to represent you in the Kentucky House of Representatives. It has indeed been a humbling honor. Uh, I think we've made some progress. Uh, we've certainly uh, made sure that every day we reflect your values and advocate for your priorities and do what hopefully can improve the economic opportunities for folks in Ohio County and give you a better quality of life. And I hope to have the privilege of continuing to do that. Some of you all may have been over last week when the governor and former president Bill Clinton and Allison Grimes were in Owensboro for an incredible rally of about 3,000 people. Hopefully, by the way, come November 4th, among other things, I hope I get reelected. I hope Wilcox gets elected, but we can really change mayor the direction of Kentucky by electing Allison Grimes. But, I thought it was really appropriate when the former president said that every election is a job interview and people make a decision on what, who they want to hire. So I hope that I'll have the privilege of being rehired on November 4th so I can continue to represent some of the finest people that I've ever gotten to know and that you all here in Ohio County. You've uh, certainly entrusted me with your confidence. Uh, you've been there for me. You've been such supporters. And believe me, I won't forget that. I always tell people uh, I'm not responsible to anybody except the people that I represent, and I won't let you down. So uh, hopefully on November the 4th, I'll have that opportunity to continue to work with you and listen to you, to work with these great public officials that we're going to elect and re-elect to keep moving this county forward. Uh, now for the certainly one of the main events, uh, a friend, an outstanding Kentuckian, Governor Steve Bashir. You know, uh, We've been through some really difficult times over the last five or six years with the economy. Everybody knows that. We've all felt it. Uh, it's been incredibly important that we've had somebody guiding our ship of state that could do it with an even keel. And we've just been so fortunate that we've had Steve this year to be that captain. Uh, a lot of other states uh, have gone into regression. Uh, they've lost the momentum that they had. They're not prepared now that we're coming out of this recession to move their state forward but because of the strategic work that Governor Bashir has done and his incredible leadership, we've maintained the priorities that are important for Kentucky through these economic contractions. We're, we've maintained our commitment to education. We've maintained our commitment to human services and to public protection to make sure that our folks are safe at home and at work. And that's because of Governor Bashir. Now, Governor Bashir has said, you know, I've been in for about seven years. It would have been nice if we'd had some more money. Uh, but he's done a great job with the limited resources we've had. And he said when he was elected some seven years ago that he wouldn't forget Western Kentucky. He's from Western Kentucky, and he said he wouldn't forget it, and he hasn't. He's been back here often. Just a few things in Ohio County. 
he was so helpful in making sure we had $4 million in his most recent two-year road plan to put a new entrance into Bluegrass Crossing Trail, which we really need to attract more industry there and have a road that doesn't go through a residential area. He understood the importance of that and made sure that that got funded. And where's Mayor Hendricks? She was here earlier, but the governor was here not too long ago making an $850,000 grant to the city of Hartford to reconstruct and rebuild a woefully inadequate and aged sewer system. Now that money is very discreet, that money is competed for, and it could have gone some other places, but we worked with the governor, Jerry and I did, and we talked about the need for that, how important it was, and he made sure that that money came to Ohio County. That's just some of the commitment that he's made. But under his leadership, we've, got, we've gained an education, we made tremendous strides in that, in job recruitment and job attainment. You may have seen just the other day, Kentucky now has its lowest unemployment rate since 2008. And that's because of Steve Bashir and what he's done. <laughs> and in healthcare, the governor said, we can't stand and we can't tolerate being the 45th least healthy state. What is wrong with having a more healthy population? So he took the lead and exercised great leadership and saying, let's start our own exchange and try to work every day to make Kentuckians healthier. And as a result of that, we've gone from being about 17% uninsured to being less than 9% uninsured. We're now in one of the top 10 states of having the least amount of uninsured in any state in the country. We have over 521,000 people now who, because of Governor Bashir and his leadership in establishing Kentucky Connect, that we have people that are not just one diagnosis or one malady away from either bankruptcy or death and that's tremendous to have a more healthy workforce and to move Kentucky into a healthier state and Governor Bashir has made that happen so it's just been a privilege to work with him uh, and I tell you one other quick thing I have never seen a governor who's worked more tirelessly for this party than this governor has every day he's somewhere on behalf of Kentucky or on behalf of our party He's been two or three places today. He's going some places when he lives here. I've never seen a governor work that hard for this party or work this hard for this state, and it's paying dividends because we have a state that we can be proud of. Let's represent and welcome a great governor, the Honorable Stephen Bashir. Thank you all. Thank you very much. First of all, thank you for coming out here on a mid-afternoon Monday. I know everybody's busy, but to see this turnout is very heartening to me that you all could find the time to spend a few minutes with us uh, to talk about some real important things. You know, as Tommy said, I was born and raised not too far from here, just down the West Kentucky Parkway in a little place called Dawson Springs in Hopkins County. Born and raised there, grew up there, uh, family there. And so I know what West Kentucky is all about. I know what a great place West Kentucky is to live. I know the quality of life here and the good people that we have here and the solid values that we have. And I want to make sure that we continue to have that kind of West Kentucky long into the future. That we continue to have the same kind of all of Kentucky that we have had because that's who we are. We are solid bedrock type of folks who get up every day, we work hard so that our kids can be more successful than we have been. I mean that's that's what our life is all about and I'm proud of that. I'm proud to be a Kentuckian and I'm particularly proud to be from West Kentucky. This election coming up in just a week now, November the 4th, is one of the most important elections that you and I will experience in our lifetimes. Now, I know you hear that all the time. You know, you hear each election is that important, but let me tell you why I say that. You know, we've had, I think, a good seven years. We've come through some tough times. The Great Recession that hit us all, uh, was tough to get through. And you all sat around your kitchen table every night to figure out how to make ends meet and what bills to pay first and how we're going to move from here to there and keep the kids in college and all of those kinds of things that families do. 
Well, we did the same thing as a state. We sat around our kitchen table and we said, you know, we got to figure out how to make ends meet because we don't have as much revenue as, as we've had in the past. We got some priorities that we've got to make sure that we maintain. So how are we going to do all of this? Well, we made the decision that we were going to have to cut our budget and we've cut it now about 14 times in seven years. We've cut about $1.6 billion in spending out of our budget during that time. But we made some important decisions and set some important priorities. We said, you know, what's the most important thing we do as a state? It's educate our kids. That's it. When you get down to it, if there's nothing else we can pay for, we need to continue to pay to educate our children. And so we set that as the number one priority. And for the last seven years, while we have cut lots of money out of lots of things because we had to, we haven't cut a dime out of education. You know, we have maintained the efforts that our great teachers and our board members and our administrators are making to educate our children. And we're now investing more because we're starting to come out of that recession and we got more money. And so that's the first place we're putting it. And people like Jerry Rose and Tommy Thompson stood there with me and decided on that priority and we held firm on that priority. Lots of decisions like that we've made over seven years. Now, we're getting in much better shape. Our economy's picking up. As Tommy said, the figures just came out and our unemployment rate's the lowest it's been since 2008. Just in August, when they looked at August, something had happened for the first time in Kentucky's history. And that was that this August, as compared to a year ago August, we had a drop in our unemployment rate in every one of Kentucky's 120 counties. Every one of them. And then in September, it happened again. So that tells me that we've got some good things going. We're moving. We, we've got things going in the right direction, and we just got to keep them on that track. You know, you all got a great community here in Ohio County. It's got a great place to live. You got a good quality of life. I've been happy to work with you to help improve that quality of life to a certain extent. As Tommy mentioned, with the entrance that we, that we put the money in the budget for, uh, with the sewer system that we brought $850,000 for Hart, Hartford for. So we're work, we've been working with you to move your communities along. But folks, this November election can change all of that. I told you that our number one priority is education. It's also public safety and it's also job creation. Those are the things that we have concentrated on for seven years. And we came with a budget. We just adopted our two-year budget, and those were the priorities we put in that budget. And we passed that budget, thankfully, and we're now putting more money into education and into the classrooms than at any time in Kentucky's history. But I need people who are going to stand up with me to continue doing that. These two fellows did it, your senator and your state representative. And I know the next fellow I, I'm about to introduce will do it too. His opponent, who's in the House right now, voted against more money for education. Voted against more money to put in the classrooms, more money for technology, new textbooks. Now, he's a nice fellow. Don't get me wrong, I like him. And do I think he's really against all of that? Well, probably not. But you know what happened? Every Republican in the House, when we put our budget forward, voted no. That budget contained all that money for education and economic development and public safety. They all voted no. Now, do I think all of them were against all of that? No, but they've apparently decided that they want to try to bring this Washington-style confrontational politics to Frankfort, Kentucky. All you got to do is turn on your TV set to find out what goes on in Washington, D.C. Nothing. You know, they can't even agree on the time of day. 
up there, much less get anything of any substance done. And the very last thing we need, folks, is to bring that kind of confrontational politics to Frankfurt. We don't need Democrats and Republicans up there looking at each other across the aisle and daring each other to throw the first punch. You know, we need people that will work together. We need people that will sit down after elections are over with and work together to try to make something happen. That's why it's so important for us to continue, number one, to control the House of Representatives with Democrats, and that's where Tommy Thompson comes in. He's absolutely vital to us continuing to do all of the great things we've been doing for seven years. But we also need a state senator from this area that's going to work with us and believes in the same things we believe in. Almost every day that I've been there for seven years, my phone rings or I get a knock on the door and it's Tommy Thompson or Jerry Rhodes worrying me to death <laughs> about something for their district. You know, they're there every day. They're pushing. They're, they're aggressive in trying to make sure that they get what they need for you. You need a state senator like that to replace Jerry Rhodes. And I can honestly say that in my seven years, the fellow running against Will, who is a state representative, I don't think has ever darkened my door to ask me for anything. Now, folks, you know the old saying that the squeaky wheel gets the grease? Well, there's a lot of truth to that. I mean, look, I've got 120 counties that I've got to take care of. I've got 4.3 million people that I've got to take care of. And there's never enough money to go around. We all know that. And so you need people that are going to be bringing issues that are vital to you to my attention. They need to be there knocking on my door. They need to be calling me on the telephone. They need to be saying, Governor, I want you to know what's going on in Ohio County. Here's what we need in Hartford. Here's what we need in Beaver Dam. You know, that's the kind of people you need. You've got to be aggressive if you're going to get something done for your people in your districts. This fellow I'm about to introduce is just like that. I've known him a long time. I've known his dad a long time. And his dad is just like these other two. He'll worry you to death, if necessary, to get what he needs. He was a state representative over in Hopkins County at one time. Bill Cox. His son, Will, is the candidate now running for the state senate. And Will is just like his dad in that he is going to be knocking on my door. He's going to be ringing my phone to make sure that I remember you. So really, what I'm saying, I mean, I'm selfish. I want him and I want Tommy because it's going to help me. But you need to understand it's also going to help you. I mean, if you want to be at the forefront of what is going on there, you've got to have representatives and senators who are going to push you there, who are going to make sure that folks like me know that there's some hot issue here that's got to be addressed. There's some sewer problem. There's some water problem. There's some economic development issue that's going on. There's some school problem that the governor needs to know about so that he can address it. That's why this election is so important to you this time. And I hope that you all will work as hard as you can to turn out this vote. Now, I know all of you here, you all are going to be fine, and you'll go out on election day and you'll vote. And folks, as much as I appreciate that, that's not enough. That's not enough. I need you to get all your family, all your friends, your neighbors, to get out and go vote. You know how these midterm elections are. People tend to kind of sit back and they'll find any excuse possible to keep from going to the polls. This is important. It's important for the people of Ohio County. And if you'll get out there and do what I know you can do, then our next state senator from here is going to be Will Cox. Will, come up here.
He did that just the way I broke it too. <laughs> two for two. I want to thank everybody for coming. Obviously, those very kind words. Uh, Jerry Rhodes, first of all, uh, you know, if I can be half the state senator Jerry is and has been, then uh, then we'll be doing just fine in Ohio County and the other three counties. And uh, uh, let's give him another round of applause for his service. Tommy Thompson and I first met 20 years ago when he was uh, in another campaign and uh, I was just a uh, young volunteer on that staff and I got assigned to drive him around and uh, spend some time with him and uh, we got locked in a room about the size of a phone booth and uh, he was working the phones and I was working the fax machine and, and we, uh, he was as nice to me as he could be and we, I feel like we, we developed a good friendship then and it's carried forward 20 years and so I'm excited about the, the, the potential to go to Frankfurt and work with him uh, for the betterment of Ohio County and the folks here. And, uh, and so I appreciate his kind words and, and him coming today. Uh, please go out and vote for him. I, I don't live in his district. If I did, I'd vote uh, for him. I'd try to vote my dogs for him absentee if I could. But uh, uh, he definitely needs to go back. And Governor Bashir, a uh, fellow Hopkins Countyan, uh, you know, what can I say when the governor introduces you? That's a, you, <laughs> that's a pretty good day. Maybe a, a potential uh, vice presidential candidate, maybe. He keeps pushing that off. But uh, uh, it, the best story I can think of uh, for Governor Bashir was when once when I was mayor, and uh, I never missed an opportunity to go to Frankfurt. And I was maybe one of the squeakiest wheels up there from a, from a mayor standpoint. And uh, I was out in the rotunda, uh, was talking to some folks, and he came through and saw me, and, and we stopped and chatted, and he said, come on back. And so we go back. and. And uh, we talk about some races at home, and, and then he says, what are you doing up here? And I said, well, I'm up here looking for some sidewalk money for South Main Street. And uh, so he says, well, tell me a little bit about it. So I told him a little bit about it, and he says, well, how much is it? And I said, well, funny you'd ask. And I opened up my coat pocket, and I pulled out the engineering estimate, and I handed it to him. And so, uh, you know, when you're sitting in the governor's office and you hand it to him, he, he was kind enough to look at it. And uh, so we chatted about it a few minutes, and, and then uh, I went on my way. And uh, a couple of days later, I got a call from uh, Secretary Hancock at that time, and uh, he said the governor has some discretionary money in the transportation budget, and he told us to build the sidewalk. And so uh, it was those kind of relationships that get things done in Frankfurt. And if you're not uh, willing to go in there and ask for it, it's not going to happen. And so in my mind, and the reason why I'm running is because in my mind, this, this race comes down to a choice. And it's a choice about what kind of state senator uh, Hopkins and Muhlenberg and Butler and Ohio counties need. And is that state senator or state senator well, one that will make things happen, or is it one who will watch things happen? And if you, if I, I will make things happen, uh, you know, I, I, I will be a squeaky wheel in the Senate to be uh, to to uh, to to be sure. And I will get up every day and do what's best for these four counties. Uh, regardless of the partisanship involved, or regardless of the party, if the if the other caucus is right, I'll be for them. If my caucus is right, I'll be for them. If that caucus is wrong, I'll be against them. If my caucus is wrong, I'll be against them. He's always going to be right, so that, I won't have to worry about that. But uh, uh, you know, we have to reach across the aisle. We don't need Washington-style politics. We've seen that in my race. You know, my opponent. Uh, it jumped on me three and a half weeks ago and hadn't gotten off yet. And that's fine. That's the kind of race he wants to run. That's, that's, that's his choice. I think it's interesting that a guy who's been running for some kind of office since I was six years old, can't think of anything else to talk about but what he's talking about. He hasn't run a single ad on anything he's done for anybody or any project he's got accomplished or anything. I can rattle off ten off the top of my head that I got done with his help when I was mayor. And so, uh, again, the choice is what kind of state senator do we want? One who makes things happen or one who watches things happen? And uh, I want to make things happen on behalf of the citizens of Ohio County. And that's my promise to you. That's my word. And uh, in the family I grew up in, uh, it's all about public service. And the values that I learned are hard work and dedication and giving back to your community and giving back to the people who put you in office and doing things for the right reason and doing things, making decisions that will stand the test of time. And that's what I want to do, for, again, for the citizens of Ohio County and the other four counties, the other three counties in the district. I ask for your vote on November 4th. I need help these last eight days 
Tommy needs help these last eight days, and we can we can uh, uh, we can get a Democratic sweep in Frankfurt with your all's help. So, are you with us? With that, uh, I want to say thank you for everybody coming out. Do we need to cover anybody else? Are we good? Where's Jason go? We will. Uh, I think we got everybody covered. So uh, again, thank you for coming out. We're eight days away. Uh, please take a yard sign. Please take a bumper sticker. Uh, you know, uh, don't. Let's leave it all on the field. Okay. Thank you very much.